Sorry. What do you do? Sorry. That's people's work. You can't graffiti here. Don't you walk away from me. Hey, fuck you. Oh, you're a clever one. What's your name? Get off the grass. It's for fellows only. Excuse me, sir. Uh, could you direct me to New Court, to Mr. Hardy? Through there. You have something on your forehead. Thank you. The shoes, they hurt my feet. <clears throat> Sorry. You see, you do exist. Yes. Right. Ramanujan, we decided that for the good of everybody, you should attend some lectures. But I'm here to publish. Yes, all in good time, I hope. But first, we need proofs of your work. It, it's really nothing to worry about. It's simply a question, acquainting you with the more formal methods that will benefit our future work together. I mean, we need a common language. You wouldn't expect us to converse with you in Tamil. No, but you expect me to speak English. Quite. So, there'll be plenty of time for publishing. I'm sorry, but with all humility, how does anyone know that? I don't want this to die with me. <laughs> I'm sure you it won't. Thank you, sir. But I have much more to share with you. As I told you, the letter only contained a small sampling of my discoveries. You'll see I have even found a function which exactly represents the number of prime numbers less than x in the form of an infinite series. Exactly? Yes, I thought if we were going to publish, it should be something uh, groundbreaking. Well, this is most unexpected. Hardy, this will take a lifetime. Maybe two. All right. Now, who can explain Newton's method and how you use it? Uh, you can use it to solve nonlinear equations. That's impressive. Uh, that's, that's really good. I mean, I'm very impressed by that, especially since my class is called Nonlinear Equations. <laughs> All right, now somebody tell me something I don't already know. Anyone? Bueller, anyone? Bueller? Uh, Newton stole it. I'm sorry? Newton stole it. Well, Joseph Raphson published the same method 50 years earlier. If the start value is too far removed from true zero, then it fails. I'm sorry, what's your name? Uh, ben, uh, Ben Campbell. Ben. So Ben Campbell suggests that Joseph Rafson was the original author of this method. Well, if that's the case, then why didn't he get any credit? Well, for one thing, Newton had a better publicist. <laughs> and for another, after 1700, we know very little about Rafson other than the fact that he discovered the Kabbalah about 300 years before Madonna. <laughs> All right, now, let's give Ben a chance for some extra credit, shall we? We're going to call this... Um, the game show host problem, all right? Ben, suppose you're on a game show, and you are given a chance to choose from three different doors, all right? Now, behind one of the doors is a new car. Behind the other two, goats. Which door would you choose, Ben? Uh, door number one. Door number one. Ben chooses door number one. All right, now, the game show host, who, by the way, knows what's behind all the other doors, decides to open another door. Let's say he chooses door number three, behind which sits... A goat. Now, Ben, game show host comes up to you and says, Ben, do you want to stay with door number one or go with door number two? Now, 
is it in your interest to switch your choice? Yeah. Well, wait. Remember, the host knows where the car is. So how do you know he's not playing a trick on you, trying to use reverse psychology to get you to pick a goat? Well, I, I wouldn't really care. I mean, my answer's based on statistics, based on variable change. Variable change, but you just asked your simple question. Yeah, but you changed everything. Enlighten us. Well, when I was originally asked to choose a door, I had a 33.3% chance of choosing right. But after he opens one of the doors and then reoffers me the choice, it's now 66.7% if I choose to switch. So, yeah, I'll take door number two and thank you for the extra 33.3%. Exactly. People remember, if you don't know which door to open, always account for variable change. Now, see, most people wouldn't take the switch out of paranoia, fear, emotions. But Mr. Campbell, he kept emotions aside and let simple math get his ass into a brand new car. <laughs> which is better than that goat you've been driving around campus. All right, everybody. <laughs> That's the end of the day. Thank you very much. Your graded papers are down here at the end. You can pick them up on your way out. Mathematicians won the war. Mathematicians broke the Japanese codes and built the A-bomb. Mathematicians like you. The stated goal of the Soviets is global communism. In medicine or economics, in technology or space, battle lines are being drawn. To triumph, we need results, publishable, applicable results. Now, who among you will be the next Morse, the next Einstein? Who among you will be the vanguard of democracy, freedom, and discovery? Today, we bequeath America's future into your able hands. Welcome to Princeton, gentlemen. We don't talk anymore.